Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, the humble cauliflower. Do you love cauliflower? Most people would say, mm, I could take or leave it. Children especially, you know, give a, a thumbs down because of how it's cooked sometimes, just boiled. And it really doesn't have a great flavor, just boiled and served with a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe butter. We have a better way, and that is to roast it. So here's a beautiful head of cauliflower. Cavol fiore in Italian. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to season this cauliflower and then I'm going to roast it as a whole head, just like this. So easy. So you really don't have to tear apart the florets. You don't have to bring a pot of water to the boil. You don't have to smell up the house with sulfuric acids. So here's how you do it. So you get a nice head of cauliflower and you want to take off those outer leaves. So you just take those off and discard them. I'm going to keep the whole thing intact. Okay, so we're going to get rid of that. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I want that cauliflower to sit upright because we're going to cook it in a pan. Now you could either use something like this, which is a cast iron pan that I love to cook it in that, or you could just use it in a, a regular casserole dish. So I'm going to trim the core just a little bit there to make sure it, it stands. So if it doesn't stand really straight, just trim that base. I'm still not happy with that, so let me get a little bit more. There, that's good. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this pan. I'm going to cook this at 325, low, low heat. So I'm going to brush the pan with a little olive oil. And then for the cauliflower, I'm going to make kind of a paste to go over it. So what do you need? So I'm going to push that aside for a second and show you what we have. So in a bowl, you want about four tablespoons of olive oil. Eyeball that, so about four tablespoons. We want about four tablespoons of tomato paste. Also gonna eyeball that. And when you buy tomato paste, make sure that you're getting a good imported brand because there are a lot of imitations out there that aren't very good. So look for a good Italian brand. So there's the tomato paste. Then we want the kicker for this, which is either a hot red pepper paste, which you can also buy in a tube like this. You could make your own, and this is some that I made, and you can find out how to make that by going to the Chow Italia website. Or you could just use hot dried red pepper flakes. But I'm going to use this. So I'm going to take about, oh, it depends on how hot you like it, but about, I'd say, a good hefty quarter tablespoon or teaspoon of that will be sufficient to keep you awake. And we need a teaspoon of dried oregano. That goes in. Then we want some salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Now we want to just whisk that up, get that all mixed into, it's almost as if it's a paste, see? Just like that. Really mix it well. This is so delicious. It's great with, if you're going to do a barbecue uh, or you just want to have cauliflower that really <laughs> gives a little zing, this is a good recipe to choose. All right, so that's our paste mixture. So now, we take our cauliflower, let me bring my pan up here, and sit the cauliflower right in there. And then what you want is a little brush, and you simply start painting the cauliflower. 
That's pretty. Nice red color. Just paint it all over. And as this bakes in the oven, it's going to flavor this. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip about cooking cauliflower as a whole head like this. Roasting it like this is going to take some time. You know, about 35, 40 minutes when you can get a knife that goes directly into that. Easily, you know that it's cooked. But if you want to take some time off of the entire cooking time, then what I suggest is you take the head of cauliflower before you do this part and put it in your microwave for about five minutes. Just put the head in the microwave for five minutes. That'll soften it a little bit and take off some of that cooking time. But I have all the time in the world, so I just, I'm just going to do it this way. But that's a tip for you in case you want to, you're in a hurry and you need to cook this fast. Put it in the microwave first, five minutes, and then finish the cooking in the oven. So get into all those little grooves and crevices all over, and I guarantee you that children are going to eat this. You don't even have to tell them what the mixture is made out of here. Just, just tell them it's a big snowball, and they're going to just love it. So a little bit more over here. And if any falls in the pan, you just pick it up and brush it right back on. So get it as evenly covered as you can. And then I'm just going to pour the rest of that oil over it, not to waste anything. OK, now this is going to take, I say, about 35 minutes to do. So my oven is already preheated, and I'm going to get this in there. And you're saying, and how do you eat this? I'll let you know. So, in it goes. Next up, spaghetti with cauliflower. So here's another head of cauliflower, and we're going to cut this up into small florets because we're going to do something that is very dear and near to every Italian cook, and that is cooking spaghetti with the cauliflower. So you cook the two at the same time. So what you want to do is, once you've washed and dried the cauliflower, taken off those excess leaves. You want to go around that core carefully just to get it out. Okay. So this we just throw away. Or if you wanted to, you could save it and put it in soup. So then you break up these florets. When you have little cauliflower pieces, you call them florets, just like you would for broccoli. So obviously these are too big. So what we have to do is take our time to break them up into tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces like that. See? Because this is going to cook with the pasta. So I just go around each piece, breaking off the cauliflower, and putting it in a bowl. Now this is really a, a recipe from Southern Italy, especially around Caltanissetta, where my grandmother came from, because she would make this all the time. This was a great way to have a dinner on the table that wasn't going to cost a lot of money, you know, because vegetables are pretty cheap. And if you had some stale bread at home, well, then you could mix that in with a little cheese if you had cheese. And with this particular recipe, we're going to be using pecorino cheese which is a sheep's milk cheese from southern Italy and has a nice salty flavor. So we're going to add that later. So you break up all these little florets. So I would say you have a medium head of cauliflower for about a pound of pasta. OK, so there we have all of our little florets. If you want to make them bigger than that, you can. But that's about the right size. So now that we have them, we need to make the sauce. Now, I've already browned the breadcrumbs that are going to go with this dish. So in the same pan, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and the garlic. So a couple cloves of garlic. Or more, if you like more, add more. So I'm going to turn that heat up now a little bit and just get that soft. And the breadcrumbs were used a long time ago 
still used in this recipe in place of cheese because you know even for Italians cheese was very very expensive but you always had stale bread so you could cut up the coarse bread and make crumbs out of it and in southern Italy this is very popular where you have bread crumbs over pasta so as the garlic is getting fragrant I want to add some other things to this like anchovy paste so I love these tubes because you can get in as much as or little as you want. I'm going to put in a good tablespoon of anchovy paste and get that mixed in. And then I'm going to add more olive oil. So about two thirds of a cup, I would say, to cook or to cover the, uh, the pasta that we're going to cook, a pound of pasta to serve six to eight people. So I'm going to turn that heat. Now you can, I wish you could be here because you can smell that anchovy paste. And I'm going to add some hot red pepper paste. Again, my favorite thing. About a quarter of a teaspoon or so, depending on how hot you like it. Mix that in. And if you don't have that, you're adding hot red pepper flakes. We'll just put a few of those in for good luck. Mix this around. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more olive oil. So I said about two thirds of a cup for the sauce. And really that's it. That is the sauce. We're going to give it some salt and pepper. Not too much salt because we have salt with the anchovy. And if you don't like the anchovy, you're just leaving that out altogether. But then it wouldn't be an authentic dish, would it? All right, so this is all there is to this. So you make this before you cook the cauliflower and the pasta, you just keep this warm somewhere because when you drain the pasta, it's gonna go directly into this pan. All right, so now we gotta get that water boiling. All right, so we wanna start with a big pot of boiling water and we wanna add a tablespoon of salt for every pound of pasta we're cooking. So one of these little salt tablets will do the job. So in it goes and now we add whole wheat pasta. I like whole wheat pasta with this in the pan. And with it, we add the cauliflower. So all of this goes in together. Now we want to cook this until the pasta is al dente. And that means that when you break a strand of spaghetti or any type of pasta you're cooking and you look in the center, you do not see any uncooked flour. So that's when you know. We don't want this to be overcooked either. So I bring it back to the boil and I wait. All right, this is cooked. I know it's cooked because I tested it. And a knife goes easily into that cauliflower. So first I'm gonna take about a quarter of a cup of this starchy water and add it right there with my sauce. And then just take this beautiful whole wheat pasta, which has a really nice nutty flavor, and add it right there to the sauce. Okay? Now this is going to serve at least six people because as I keep telling you, a pound of pasta is really enough to serve eight people if you eat the appropriate amount that Italians eat, which is like a cup of cooked pasta. So we're gonna get that all into our pan. And then whatever is left in the pan, the, uh, the cauliflower, you can scoop it up with a spider. So get the most of this out. It's looking good. And now, the rest of the cauliflower. This is a great way to cook both things at once. Leave it to the Italians. They really know how to do it. All right, that's the end of that. And now we're going to put this in our pan here and mix this all up with the sauce. And remember what I'm always telling you. Sauce should really lightly coat pasta and never be in the bottom of the bowl, but it should be around the pasta itself. 
and it's smelling absolutely wonderful with the anchovies and the olive oil. And once this is well mixed, all we have to do is put it in a bowl and toss it with some Pecorino Romano cheese and those toasted breadcrumbs. Here we go. Put this over. Now, give this a nice toss, and I think the nuttiness of the whole wheat pasta is perfect with this. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a few extra hot red pepper flakes over the top. But of course, you have to add the Pecorino Romano cheese. Pecorino is a sheep's milk cheese. Over the top, has a nice salty flavor. It's perfect for this dish. And of course, some of those breadcrumbs using really good bread that you fried in olive oil. And speaking of which, we can give that just a little douse over the top. And there you have it, a classic from Southern Italy. How about we do a cauliflower steak? That's something that's all the rage right now. So we've gone from the very traditional, the spaghetti with cauliflower, breadcrumbs, and cheese, to something that is really kind of in the limelight. So to do it, to make a cauliflower steak, you want to brush a nonstick baking pan with some olive oil, and then just set that aside. And then in a bowl, or rather, let me start with the parsley. We want to mix up kind of like a, a rub, if you will, that we're going to put on the steak. So some fresh parsley. Make sure you're using flat leaf Italian parsley, which has a lot of flavor as opposed to curly parsley, which isn't as t intense in flavor. Plus, it's not my favorite, so I really prefer using the flat leaf Italian parsley, and always use it fresh. Don't, don't try to do this with dried parsley because it just will not be the same thing. So you really want to give it a good mince. Okay, that's good. We're going to put it in a bowl, just like that. That's about two hefty tablespoons, I would say, of parsley. And then we want some celery salt. I usually use this uh, if I'm doing soup or I put it in a potato salad, but it's good with this cauliflower too because, you know, cauliflower by itself is just uh, kind of bland. So about a teaspoon of that goes in. And then a few hot red pepper flakes go in. You want some salt and pepper, obviously. salt, and some garlic. So here are two cloves of garlic. Let's smash those down, chop them up. And then we're just going to mix that all with a little bit of olive oil, and that's going to be what we're going to brush on the cauliflower. Now I make this steak in several ways. Sometimes I add vegetables, cooked vegetables to it, like spinach, over the top just before I take it out of the oven. And then I put cheese on top of that. So then you pretty much have a complete meal. So there's the garlic, and that's going in here. Okay, so now that we have that, let me mix that up. Me, okay. and we're going to give that some olive oil, extra virgin. And mix that around so it's almost pasty. Okay. okay, so we set that aside. I'm going to clean off my board here now and work with the cauliflower. Okay. 
So here's our head of cauliflower again. So with a clean knife, we want to cut this into thick pieces. So go down. the front of it like that, see? If you get a couple pieces that don't cling, that's okay. But try to cut thick slices, see? Like that, thick slices. Let me do one more. Okay, so once you have it like that, we didn't take the core out at all, then, let me move this closer to me. You take these and you lay them. I'll just do those two for you. Lay them on your bake sheet. And then you take this mixture, and I'm going to use my hands because that's what I normally do. And you brush this with the mixture. See? over the top, just like that. It'll fall into some of those little holes and crevices. Just pat it on there. All right. And once you have it like that, then you can give it a little extra olive oil. And it goes right into a 375 degree preheated oven. So we're going to bake these oh, until a knife can easily be inserted. That could be anywhere between 25, 30 minutes, even less. And five minutes before we take these out of the oven, we're going to put on some grated Asiago cheese. So aren't they beautiful? Cauliflower steak goes in the oven. And while that's cooking, we'll grate the cheese. Okay, now I'm grating the Asiago cheese that we're going to put on that cauliflower steak about five minutes before it's done. I'm going to open the oven and just put the cheese on and then put the cauliflower steaks back in the oven just until the cheese melts. So for two big cauliflower steaks, you probably need about one and one half cups of the grated Asiago. And remember, Asiago cheese is that wonderful mountain cheese from Asiago in the region of the Veneto. And it's a nice cow's milk cheese. It has tiny little holes in it when it's very young. It's very buttery, it has a nice soft texture. And then as it ages, of course, then it becomes drier, firmer, and it's grateable. It has a really nice nutty taste to it. So I think we've got just about enough here. Yep, and as soon as those steaks are ready, this is going on. <music> Cauliflower cavolfiore in Italian never gets its culinary day in the sun, according to a lot of vegetable eaters. However, the Italians know just how to treat it. And today we made three dishes for you using the humble white cauliflower. And here we baked the entire head in the oven. Remember, we made a paste of tomato paste and olive oil and herbs. We painted the top of it, we placed it in the oven, and now it's fork tender, ready to eat. And if you want to travel on down to southern Italy, where my roots are, then you'll recognize this dish, spaghetti with cauliflower, breadcrumbs, and pecorino cheese, an all-time favorite. And say, how about something really modern today, a cauliflower steak? At the end, we put on some grated Asiago cheese. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. Ciao! Marianne shares her lifelong food adventures in Italy with you. 
over 160 authentic regional recipes, plus photographs and personal stories that bring them to life, this cookbook is available wherever books are sold and on the web. Learn more about the culture and cuisine of Italy's many regions and prepare many of their unique recipes by visiting Marianne at her website, ciaoitalia.com.